This is an unboxing of a very special internet product. This is a flu test, but not any flu test. This will tell us whether we have coronavirus in our household. I just got this package delivered by UPS. It was ordered about a day ago from the Seattle Flu Study. And as you can see, we live in Kirkland, Washington. That is coronavirus capital for the country now. At this point in time, there's only about 250 people in Washington state who have the coronavirus, but the governor just announced that there could be 64,000 in eight weeks. So uh, this is a very serious business. And if we're gonna do anything about this, we are gonna need testing. And right now, this is the general public's best hope. The Seattle flu study was started to just track influenza A and B, but when they heard about the coronavirus, they quickly added that to their test regime. And um, so a couple days ago, uh, we contacted the Seattle flu study and said that we had an illness and they sent us this box by UPS. And we are gonna do this, uh, do this swab. And uh, I've covered up barcodes here, but otherwise this is, this is what you get. There's instructions here. So what we're gonna do is we have to go online and we have to fill out a survey. Now I should point out very important caveat. Just in the last day or two since we filled out the study, they've already posted that they are no longer taking applicants. But my hope is that when you see this video, there will be other places that are doing this same thing. So uh, we're gonna fill out a survey and then we're going to blow the nose, remove this swab, show you the swab, remove the swab from the packaging and you can kind of see that there's, there's a handle here and then there's a bump in the middle here. And then this is the part that goes in the nose. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take this vial, this sample container, gonna remove the cap. Then we're gonna take this, this swab and put it one inch into the nose and rotate it, pressing up against the side five times. And I've been warned by other people that have taken this test, you are gonna sneeze. So just be prepared for that. Then you're gonna place the swab into the container and it actually breaks off at a scoring line, which looks like the scoring line is actually somewhere up here. Well, that'd be a little bit too tall. I, I can't see the well, the scoring line is somewhere in here. It's gonna break off. And then we're gonna put the cap back on here. You're gonna fill out name and date and then we're gonna mail it back as soon as possible. They give you a um, prepaid bag. And these tests, the Seattle Flu Study, is being run through the UW Medical Center, which has announced so far that they can run 1,000 tests a day and that they have the capability of ramping up to 4,000 tests a day. And there are other labs, private labs in the Seattle area that say that they can ramp up to several thousand tests a day as well. So we're gonna write that on there. We're gonna put the, the specimen in the bag and we're gonna mail it back. And this is a uh, priority mail. I think this is an overnight because it's $7.35. So this should get there same uh, within one day. Uh, now the tricky part is they have a, um, a follow-up survey. They don't necessarily tell you what they found. At this point, all these tests are being, they're, they're notifying the health department. If you do have coronavirus, the health department is obligated to tell you that you have coronavirus. That may not always be true in the future, but at this point, they're still telling everybody. So it's a kind of a good, no news is good news. If we don't hear anything back, then we're fine. If we hear back, then we know we've got the coronavirus. Um, there's a survey that we're supposed to fill out. They say that Within three months, you may uh, get an email telling you what you had in influenza A, influenza B, or the coronavirus, but it's not an ironclad guarantee. But hopefully a test like this will solve this crisis for us by allowing people to either at home or also the UW's doing drive-through, be able to swab our noses, get this evaluated in the lab quickly, and tell us whether we have coronavirus. So I hope by the time that you watch this news that these tests are widely available for you and that we have this under control. 
Okay, so we're actually gonna run the test here, but for privacy reasons, I'm not gonna show you the patient. So I'm gonna take out this swab and we figured out that one inch is exactly this little fluffy part right there. And the scoring line is at the very end of the handle. So I'm gonna give this to the patient and the patient is gonna put it in the nose one inch, press the swab against the side of the nose and rotate five times. Okay, go ahead. And I'm wearing an N95 mask to make sure that if she sneezes, keep on going a little bit more. There you go. Now rotate it all the way around your nose five times. You're doing a great job. <laughs> That's it, all the way up in there. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and open this vial. Make sure I carefully don't spill it. Okay, you got it five times? Yeah, wait, let's do it. It's fun, but she's doing a great job. She's not sneezing. <laughs> okay, I think you got it by now. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and this is a DNA test, so you don't need to have a lot of mucus. You don't want a lot of mucus. So we're gonna insert it in there. The scoring line is right at the end here. Okay. Take that. Close it. Make sure we've got it firmly in there. Okay, so we're gonna fill a little bit of paperwork here. And then there's uh there's several different bags here. There's a specimen bag we put it in, then put it into the mailing bag. And uh, I'll put in the comments if we find out any information in a few days. Okay, I've asked the patient to describe what did it feel like to put the swab up the nose? Um, it was actually a lot narrower, the um, device. And so it, it was just a little bit more awkward than uncomfortable. And so I definitely wouldn't worry about um, being nervous. Um, a little nerves are okay, I'm sure, but um, it, it went well and a lot easier than I thought. And we tried a Q-tip one inch and that was a lot harder, wasn't it? It was, that the, was not the good. Q-tip is too big, whereas the swab is very small. So it didn't hurt, we did it when it, it did not okay. hurt at all. So it, we, and then you have to take the post-it off, right? Okay, so now we're going to put this into the box. Okay, I'm gonna take this box. Put the box into the bag. It tightly, we've removed the adhesive strip. Okay, this goes out in the mail tomorrow. I wanted to add one other note. Right now, the big question in a lot of people's minds is where are the test kits? Why don't we have enough test kits? Everyone's talking about the test kits. And uh, there's a lot of discussion saying, oh, well, the test kits are made by the federal government. No, the test kits are made by big pharma. So we don't really know where all the test kits are, but there's actually two kind of test kits. One, the CDC has to give smaller labs the materials in order to run these tests. But the UW Medical Center, they've actually come up with their own test. And um, independent of the CDC, they can run these tests based on the DNA signature of the virus. So when we talk about where are the test kits and where why are the test kits being held up, it's not a straightforward answer. It's not like there's one product coming from one manufacturer or even a couple of manufacturers. Any lab can do these test kits. And this test kit, this is nothing special. I believe that this swab, this is just a stock swab from their stock supply. This vial here is again, it's just a, a stock vial with some growth media in it that is nothing special. What's special is what happens at this lab here at the UW Medical, Medical Center. and. Again, there are independent labs like LabCorp that are setting up to do this as well. So it's not really a question of test kits. It's just a, a total logistical problem of how do you 
get these swabs into people's noses and get them shipped to the lab and have the lab, have these independent labs set up to be able to test it. Um, I heard the UW Medical Center people talking about reagents. So there's certain chemicals that are necessary to perform the lab and they're telling everybody what the reagents are. So it's just a logistical problem of getting all of that done. And then there shouldn't be a problem being uh, with enough people being able to be tested. But right now there are literally, this is a test kit, but it's not the only type of test kit. And they are, they need to, you know, make these. There's nothing fancy about this. Just a, you know, somebody put up a box. You don't even need a box. Um, these are stock, stock medical supplies. It's just, if you get the lab set up and you get these supplies set up. So hopefully there will soon be enough labs around the country with the correct reagents and these just regular stock medical supplies drive through even to be able to let us all get tested.